I'd like to call the Board Governance Committee meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is roll call, please. Henry Jones. Here. Mona Pascal Rogers. Present. Rob Beckner. Good afternoon. Lisa Middleton. Present. Stacy Oliveras. Here. Jason Perez. Here. Ramon Rubalcava. Present. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next is approval of the November 18th Board Governance Committee timed agenda. Motion on that. Moved by Mr. Perez, okay. second by Mr. Fechter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, hearing none, the item passes. The next one item is executive report. Mr. Jacobs. Yes, good afternoon, President Jones. Uh, there are three essentially substantive items on today's calendar. The first is the code, of, excuse me, the calendar review. Uh, that is on consent, that's 5A. And then 6A and 6B B are updates from uh, work streams four and five. And with that, I will turn it back to you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Okay, so we're moving right along. The next item is the approval of the minutes of the Go Board Governance Committee of September 17th. Action item, need a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Pascal Rogers, uh, second by Ms. Middleton. All those in favor say aye. 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 Hear, opposed, hearing none, the item is approved. The next item is consent agenda items and it's um, uh, annual calendar review 2019 and 5B board and committee meeting schedule for 2020. Uh, before I take any questions on that, uh, recognizing that the investment committee meeting is moving to four meetings a year and recognizing the abundance of information that has to be discussed and debated. Uh, I'm gonna ask the CEO to work with the chair of the investment committee to draft a couple of um, items for consideration for the committee to look at uh, having additional meetings or rearranging issues that must come to the committee so that we don't get in a situation where we have to urgently call a meeting. So it's better to plan ahead and and look at maybe having a meeting inserted in, in a planned agenda rather than trying to get everyone to come the next week to an me urgent meeting. So I'll ask the CEO to work with Mr. Fechner in that regard. And also, since Mr. Fechner is the chair of the Health Benefits Committee, I will also ask the CEO to work with him on looking at the uh, number of issues that are time sensitive, like uh, uh, health rates that uh, when they would be coming to the board to be sure that there's ample time for uh, to receive that information and to provide uh, access to that information with our stakeholders and so then therefore we won't have to be running again trying to give them sh a short notice to come and attend the meeting so if we could uh, have that in mind when you look at this item as it is an information item but I thought it was important that we have those options come back to us at that time. Uh, so with that, uh, we've got some questions. Number three, uh, Ms. Brown. Oh, I'm not. A, do you want the committee members first? It, well, it's. Uh, okay, I'll go. Thank you. Both of the questions are yes, from non-committee members. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I, what I was wondering, um, if there is any items that were previously used to be on the agenda, like in the prior years, and aren't on the agenda for 2020, and if there are, could we get a list of any items removed? And then also, also a list of any items that went from discussion to consent, and this is all about uh, board oversight. Just a list. Thank you. Okay. Since I don't have to, so I don't have to compare myself. Okay, thank good. you. Okay, uh, Ms. Taylor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make sure, so what you're saying here is this is a reworkable agenda. I mean, possible calendar. Right. Okay, so we're going to, this is what we're starting with, and then right. we may get to more months off or less months L probably off? Probably less months. Less months <laughs> off. I kind of thought that way. Based okay. on the, the CEO and Mr. Fector, uh, and they will share that with this committee and the full yeah. board, matter of fact. So. Okay, well, because yeah. I already put it on my calendar, guys. No. Yeah, no, and the decision the, was at least quarterly, remember? Yeah. So Right, no, I, I am aware. And we are actually more than that already with this calendar. Yep. So if we go to more, then we'll end up even more than that, so. Okay. And that's fine. And um, and then on the insight tool, um, why did that cut off? I think, oh, there it is, okay. Sorry, it looked like it cut off. Uh, these are 
what are supposed to be something that we're not normally seeing on our month to month basis or would be on the month to month basis. But because we're not having monthly meetings, the insight tool is going to have this information. Is that correct? So for example, I don't know the monthly um, return rate, uh, returns, that kind of stuff that's going to be in here, even on months we're not meeting, that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah, so there's an information item on the Insight tool on the committee today. Um, but the Insight tool, the reason that getting feedback on the dashboard and what you all want to see in the Insight tool is that you would be able to continue to provide monthly oversight around information and that you would not have to sit up there to provide that oversight. So it's really important to engage with us and tell us what you need. Yeah. And uh, that will come as a part of this uh, agenda item today. Yeah, okay. and that's item six, Ms. Taylor. We're, All right. We, we're going to address that. You could okay. ask, re reiterate your question. At All right, that. thank uh, you. Okay. Okay, um, number three. Um, Ms. Brown. I forgot to ask a question. Um, so it looks like right now when I look at this calendar, we will be meeting January, February, March, in April, and that's just because Southwest had had some fifty nine dollar fares, and it's great to try to book those ahead of time. So very good. Okay. Right. Yes, what we found in creating the draft agenda is there are time certain decisions right. that the board has to make, and they tend to be preloaded earlier in the year for whatever reason. So yeah, book those Southwest. Thank you. And save us some money. Okay, number twelve, uh, Ms. Oliveras. Well, I'm excited that the investment committee is going to meet quarterly. Um, I do want to make sure that we're able to get the investment materials in a timely manner. Um, as of now, it's a tremendous challenge to read so much information less than a week prior. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm able to do my job as a fiduciary. So I want to know how far in advance those materials will be made available to us. So I've been working with Mr. Bienvenu. I don't think he's in the room any longer. But um, the goal that we're having for the quarterly meetings is at least two weeks in advance. So that's where we're starting. Um, but there could be agenda items that would be ready sooner than that that could maybe be put out into Insight tool um, you know, once they were ready. One of the things we're really careful about is making sure that at the time that the agenda is noticed that all of the content is there, but that we also don't get the content too far ahead of the, the notice. So the investment committee is really where this has become a little bit more of a challenge because the other committees typically meet around quarterly already. It's the investment committee moving from nine down to four. But because we're moving from nine to four, we should be able to gather those materials and get them out there sooner. Right now, I've asked the team to look at two weeks weeks, minimum two weeks, and see if they'd be able to accommodate that and uh, obviously get your feedback after that point. I think four weeks would be a better target. We will do our best, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we will do our best. And the fewer meetings is helpful, but the first question that I've asked the investment committee is tell us why it can't be done in two, but I, you know, we can certainly ask them what would be the challenges in four, but stale data, stale material would be a problem for you as right. well. Okay. Yes, in a dynamic environment we, that we're in. Uh, Eleven is uh, Ms. Mills. Okay. Uh, I want to second uh, Ms. Oliveira's comments that uh, the more time that we have to prepare is certainly uh, very helpful and, uh, and frankly, very important. Uh, I think this is a very uh, good calendar and one that uh, I am happy to, uh, to support. Uh, I would like on a personal note, uh, just as a matter of information, uh, since it had been raised previously, uh, the Palm Springs City Council voted unanimously uh, at our last meeting to move all 2020 Palm Springs City Council meetings to Thursday evening. So Mrs. Frost. Uh, there were a variety of reasons for that. Uh, <laughs> Most importantly, our city council uh, tends to go until about midnight on a regular basis. Uh, our offices are closed on Fridays, and city staff was thrilled at the prospect of not having to come into uh, city hall uh, a few hours after a close of a midnight meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Frost and Mr. Fechner, no Thursday meetings. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, seeing no further comment, we will move now to 
uh, information agenda item six, board work stream four. Mr. Jacobs and Ms. Yes. Simpson. Six A. Six A. Uh, the written agenda item for this really channels the thoughts of the members of work stream four, uh, which were Mr. Fechner and Mr. Perez. Uh, the thoughts being, and just a quick summary, that most of what the board wants covered in a code of conduct is already covered in existing policies uh, that have been laid out in the agenda item. There are various dangers of replicating policies in different places. You can get conflicts, you can get inconsistencies, some other issues. And with that realization, the thought was to bring this back, uh, whether to ask whether it might be better to uh, review, have board members, or I should say committee members, as an initial matter, review the existing policies, uh, identify items that they think might be missing or that they might want to change, um, potentially supplement or amend uh, existing policies uh, instead of creating a new policy. Uh, one thought was that uh, you might want to add a provision requiring members to certify once a year that they had read uh, the key policies and agreed to be bound by them. Um, <clears throat> question, I think, or one of the questions would be, are there, are there others uh, that are not covered elsewhere that should be added? That's just kind of a summary of the thinking, and with that, I will turn it over to you, uh, President Jones, or uh, Workstream 4 members, as you, as you see appropriate. Okay. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, I think that's a good approach, and we will see what other um, committee members or board members uh, comments on this and see where we go from there. Uh, for Ms. Taylor. There's no... Committee members ahead of me? Uh, oh, Mr. Perez. I'm losing numbers, not I know, names. I know. So okay. excuse me. <laughs> it's not easy. I was starting from the lowest number. Mr. Perez, and then I'll come back to you, number four. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I submitted a uh, memorandum to Mr. Jacobs uh, asking that we just dismiss the, this work stream altogether. We already have everything, and it seems super redundant. And I guess the saying super redundant is redundant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and we appreciate the, the comment, but if, if any other board member has anything they would like to add, I would not want to stop that. If, and then, but if, I, if no one brings forward anything, then we will be able to, to move in that direction, unless the board members are at that stage now. Uh, let's see. Would you, Teresa, would you hit your number? Again? Oh, no, it's on. It's on? Okay, go ahead. Um, so... I will say when we left the last time, we voted uh, as a board to, or at least as a committee, and then I think we affirmed it as the board, to move forward with the code of conduct. So I think it's important that we move forward with it. I think the problem is the redundant information that's put in there is our fiduciary duty. We don't need that in a code of conduct. Our code of conduct, and I pulled up the state of California code of conduct. Now, there's a bunch of stuff we can't use because it goes back to actual government code, but there's a bunch of stuff we can use um, that should be in there. Mor uh, moral ter turpitude, immorality, um, disc discourteous treatment of the public. We, we are not forming a code of conduct, and I appreciate, uh, Jason and, and Rob, your work on this, but Code of conduct isn't reiterating our fiduciary duty 15 times, which is why it's so repetitive. What we're looking for is a, a, an aspirational code of conduct to um, garner our behavior. It doesn't have to do with law. That's why it's in here, you know, moral turpitude and that kind of stuff. If you are out in the public doing something that reflects badly on the state of California, that's why they have that in here, right? It, would be, it should be the same for, I think, the CalPERS board. If you are reflecting information that is incorrect out in public, then that should be in our code of conduct. So I think it's important that since this, co this was part of a whole, um, our, our board 
review, our board survey that we did, and everybody agreed that we needed something like this. And I know our board has changed since that review, but I still think it's important and imperative that we put that together. Um, and I'm re I read through our code of conduct, and yeah, you're right, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, that shouldn't be in there that is in our policy. The other issue, though, Matt, is our policy is really long. So if we pull some of those pieces out, some of it is good. I don't know if we want to turn this over to the whole board to our, or the board president to assign a couple of people to, uh, from the board and some staff members to rewrite this, but I think that that's where we should go. That's my personal opinion. I don't know if I have the board on my side on that, but um, as I look at both the California Code of Conduct and our Code of Conduct, there is a problem with our Code of Conduct. We're putting way too much stuff in there that's already in our policy, that's law, that's in the Constitution. It doesn't need to be in there. Okay. Um, Ms. Pascal Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ooh. I think that, um, I, I remember that, I, I remember being one of the people that supported the Code of Conduct, but, but I also have been thinking about it, and I think that, um, I don't think that a, a new code is necessi necessary. I think what might be helpful is every year, is, doesn't every year we take, an, we have to do the ethics training? We have to do some training that I was nearly last to do. So um, how about if there is a statement, like a, it, like a that we, ha we affirm that, I mean, how ridiculous is it that we have to say we're not gonna break the law, we're not gonna share confidential information, we're not gonna, you know, we're gonna be disrespectful to each other. We should just say that we've read the code of conduct, and will and want to represent the Calpers of in the best way possible, or something like that. But just, but just, just, well, just a, a piece of paper that you sign, because we don't need to in, reinvent a new code. A, a code. There's already one that's existing, as Matt has said, right? Or did I hear you wrong? Well, there's several. There's several. I mean, <clears throat> there as, is one. As, as as an appointed member on a state board. There not there a code of conduct for people who are, for at least for this board? What, no. What you find is that the, in the governance policy, which covers an, the governance and how things get right. done, there are probably, I would say, at least a third to a half, I don't know, a third, let's say, of the paragraphs in there are directed to conduct of the board and expectations pertaining to board conduct. Isn't uh, that enough? Well, that's for y you folks to decide. I, I feel like we are, I feel like we shouldn't reinvent something. If, the, if what's, what's in the government code is enough, you know, I think that that should, and if there are situations where people get out of line, then we need to bring it up in an open meeting. But I don't think that it's really necessary to re, you know, to, to, uh, when we have something in the government code. That's just my opinion. Okay, okay uh, Mr. Miller. Yeah, I, I think there, to me, there are two areas where existing policy, rules, regulations, laws, statutes, et cetera, et cetera, do not provide us what we need to be more effective here. And I think one, and this is one I've kind of feel like I'm beating a dead horse is, we have no real mechanism to deal as a board on behalf of our constituents with truly egregious behavior should it occur. Um, and should, or should we learn that it has occurred um, and we don't have tools to deal with it? That's probably an issue um, that's bigger than this discussion today, but something I think the, the Governance Committee should be looking at. Um, you know, is there something that can be done? Is it the right political and legal and environment to, to address that kind of thing? But on the other end of the spectrum is just the basic expectations we have of each other that we want to put down and agree to and be honor bound in terms of what things mean and how we're going to conduct business, how we're going to treat each other, how we're going to treat 
our commitments to the laws and regs, how we're going to speak, how we're going to communicate, how we're going to address the public. You know, it's easy to say respect. What does that really mean? It's easy to say courteous. What does that really mean to us? And come to some understanding and put some of that down so that we all have a shared understanding so that we can call each other on it if we overstep. But uh, just by kind of shining it on and not having those discussions, I think we'll end up right back in the same boat where people are finding they don't trust each other, they're offended by each other, they feel insulted or disrespected by each other. So maybe it's just an internal team building type thing, I don't know, but I don't see that changing unless we change and having a more fulsome discussion and something about code of conduct may be a way to get there. Okay. Uh, Ms. Milton. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I think that code of conducts are pretty commonly used in many, many public bodies. Uh, and they are almost always incredibly short. And if it, uh, uh, I don't know that I have seen one in uh, any municipality that is longer than a page. Uh, I, and generally, uh, they are shorter than that. Uh, so I, I think it is something that's appropriate for us to have, but it should be uh, very lean in terms of uh, the language that's there. I know how tough it is to try to get everything in. Uh, but I, brevity is a value, and not trying to correct every potential wrong is a value as well. Uh, I'm a strong believer that statements of uh, what should be is something we should have in any body. Uh, but uh, you cannot uh, legislate decorum and good behavior. Uh, and mutual respect. Those are things that uh, uh, we hope that people bring to the table. And when uh, there's a feeling that that doesn't exist, that's conversation that frequently has to take place uh, with some one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, so with that, uh, I, I still support the concept of a uh, code of conduct if we can get it to be a very short statement. Uh, I would like to make a comment uh, regarding uh, the incompatible activities. Uh, my computer will cooperate with me, and let me bring it up. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm looking at item 6A, attachment 3, page 3 of 4, and it is Number th uh, section three, outside activities, number 11. And it, as it reads right now, publishing any writing or making any statement to the media, state administrators, legislative personnel, or members of the public, which purports to represent PERS position on a policy or on any matter or subject before the board has finally adopted a policy position on that matter or subject. Period. This section shall not be interpreted to preclude board members as private citizens from expressing their personal views. I think I know what we're trying to accomplish here, uh, but I really think this one uh, needs to go back. Uh, we as uh, members of this board are going to frequently be asked our opinion of a matter that will be coming before us as voting members uh, by the media and by others, you can't identify that this is going to be the position of CalPERS, uh, but it is not inappropriate for a, one of us to say to the media, I believe strongly that we need to have reform in this area and uh, while I don't have all of the evidence, I haven't heard from all of the witnesses, I am inclined to support Measure A or Measure B or whatever it is. That happens every day 
uh, as legislation and matters come up. Uh, where you get offline is when you say uh, something that infers what other people other than yourself are going to do. And I frankly think you uh, are mistaken as an individual member if you do not put out that disclaimer. I have yet to hear from all of the witnesses that will be appearing. Therefore, this is my preliminary judgment, not my final judgment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Ms. Middleton, I think it, that's a prime example to show that the board governance policy needs to be refreshed because since that language was written, the board actually adopted a disclaimer. Yeah. That essentially says that these are these are my views as a as a board member that may not necessarily represent the views of the full board. Right. And in addition, uh, Ms. Frost, that uh, written statements when board members make presentations at various uh, conferences, we've asked that they make that statement before they start talking, so that it does exactly. not represent Calpers. Okay. Uh, eight. Ms. Pascal or I just. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is a question for Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not on. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is for Matt. So I, um, in my previous life, I used to remember there were some boards that were where they were the people that were appointed um, by the governor. And they, um, and there, certain things would happen, different dynamics on the board. There were cases where the board could take a vote to remove a board member. And a couple of times they did. Is that not, does, is, that, is that just for certain boards or? or yes. Okay. That's just for certain boards. It is not for the CalPERS board. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Rubacaba. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I would be in favor. I think we do need um, a code of conduct. I, I do think we need some guideposts as to to guide us in our day-to-day uh, -day activity as a board member. So I would be in favor of... Uh, Another look, see at it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Taylor. So, thank you for letting a non member sort of put her two cents in. I think, Lisa, I'm not sure this statement of uh, attachment three, we already have this the statement of activities that are in, inconsistent, incompatible, or in conflict. Those are already one of our standards, correct? Am I correct, Matt? Attachment number three? Yeah. Attachment number three is already something we have. Yes. Yeah, okay, that is. I just wanted to make sure. So if we're rewriting, that would be a good place to start because that is this is actually a little more about behavior and aspirational behavior than the one we have. My suggestion, and it is up to the committee members is to ask for a rewrite. And I don't know, Mr. Chair, if you want to do that, ha ask for a rewrite with Ann Simpson's help since she's the one who, um, you know, led us through this the whole time. So then that way, maybe we can get to that one page. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? okay. All right. Uh, 13. Mr. Perez. Lucky number 13. Uh, I agree with Lisa. You cannot, you cannot make somebody and get along with people. And the problem that I have with uh, code of conduct is it's got no teeth. Absent me being convicted of a crime, I cannot be removed from this board. Appointees are different, but an elected member can't be removed from the board absent a conviction of a crime. So everything we're saying has no teeth. And, and, you know, and I think that um, your point is well taken, Mr. Perez, and it, it does prevent sometimes for the board to take action that they feel is necessary when a violation has been recognized. So I think that in addition to whatever we come up with this code of conduct, I, need we, I think we need another path to talk about what legislative changes we may want to seek to modify 
And I know that's a high bar, but I think we can't just sit here and not try. So I would be, you know, of the mind that going forward, even though we come up with a code of conduct, if that's the pleasure of the board, that we also agendize to start talking about some of these other issues that we said we're going to talk about, like the code of conduct, sexual harassment is another one, that we need to start talking about those things and perhaps see whether or not legislation would be uh, available to us to, to put some teeth in some of the actions that we may take. So we may not succeed. I know it's a high bar, but at least we, I think we should take steps to see if we can. But in the meantime, we have to recognize the majority of the board here about their preferences, okay? But it's a good point that you're right, this lack of teeth and some of the steps to take. Okay, number eight, uh, Ms. Pascal Rogers. Oh, no. Uh, okay, isn't that you? Okay, number five. Oh, I think you just turned my mic up, Mr. Chair. Oh, okay. Well, then, okay. <laughs> um, so but we're also supportive of food. having a short code of conduct and um, also Teresa's suggestion of going through and revising the governance manual because it is a little bit cumbersome. And then we do agree with having everybody read and have to certify that they've read annually all these documents just to make sure. And I think your idea, Mr. Chair, of having a legislative go at trying to change and implement some teeth to discipline would be good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rufino. <laughs> it is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Actually, Lynn said it best. I, I, I would ditto exactly uh, <clears throat> what the uh, state controllers uh, just said the treasurer does support some sort of code of conduct, uh, whether it's a pager or two pagers. Um, and for us today to renege on that after a year of working on it, I remember about a year ago, roughly, I think at offsite, one of the questions that the treasurer asked is whether there was a code of conduct. And I, if I recall correctly, uh, the answer was no. It, there wasn't one, and we were all shocked. How could that possibly yeah. be? So, and that's, I think, what kind of started this conversation. And, and although uh, we haven't found the perfect one pager yet, but I think that's the challenge of this committee and the challenge, one and a half pager, oh, one and a half pager whatever, but that's the challenge. And I think uh, it will be definitely uh, worth pursuing. And, uh, and of course, yearly um, sign at the, at the station, I think it would be certainly uh, a way to go. But uh, there's been s numerous incidents, I think, in the past with the board, which I think we could benefit for something in writing, even though it may not have the kind of teeth that we hope to have, but uh, it will be a worthwhile effort. So the treasurer does support the, uh, the effort. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, you go. President Jones. <clears throat> yes. Can I just make a comment here? Sure. <clears throat> I want to make clear. While there is not a code of conduct that is called code of conduct, there is a board governance policy. There are several other policies that do regulate or purport to regulate conduct. So <clears throat> it's not as if there's no code of conduct at all. It's just not called that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller. Yeah, um, I, I agree as well with, with Ms. Backman. A, a short, sweet code of conduct or whatever you call it to, to kind of um, give us a touchstone for the shared understanding of how we want to interact and behave in a way that's not uh, redundant of or trying to recapitulate all those issues related to conduct. But I also really think that at the other end of the spectrum, you know, Jason mentioned that committing a crime Committing a crime would not remove me from this board. It might physically have me dragged off to jail where my constituents would not have a voice here for the next you know, year and a half or two, but it would not allow this board to remove me and replace me, whether on my first day as an elected officer or my last. It wouldn't allow the governor to remove me, wouldn't allow the legislature or the voters who elected me to represent them, our constituents. And I believe that's a shortcoming that needs to be dealt with, whether in the context of um, failures of good behavior, such as sexual harassment, things that rise to a misdemeanor or a crime, 
Um, we have no teeth, and Jason's absolutely right about that. We have no teeth for dealing with failures of good behavior, and the more egregious they are, the less teeth we really have. So unless someone resigns from their elected seat, they occupy that seat, and their, their constituents have no recourse. If I may correct that, um, there is actually a law that says if you're convicted of a felony, you are off the board, and that if you are convicted of a misdemeanor that pertains to uh, your responsibilities as a uh, officer of the entity, this being CalPERS, uh, you would also be off the board. So uh, what, uh, and I had sent the board a memo about this um, some time ago. Uh, I, I believe it's been loaded into your, <clears throat> into the board books in the resources section. And while the board members continue to talk about this, I will try to locate that. Wait a minute. Uh, it's your... But again, Mr. Miller. Okay, hold on just a minute. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, well, I appreciate uh, that. I, I, I'm glad to stand corrected on that because uh, my understanding was that uh, there wasn't anything specific enough to us to, to apply. So that's, that's good news from my perspective. Okay, got 13. Mr. Perez. I, the only th thing I wanted to add, sir, is I think it's very dangerous to go to the legislature and ask for an amendment. Uh, once they get their foot in the door, whether this this administration or another administration, doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter which side you're on, uh, then they will want to control $380 billion. Yeah. We're not changing the Constitution. So, yeah. So we're not suggesting going to change, have a constitutional amendment, just legislation to give us some... Anyway, uh, 14 is uh, Mr. Rubicaba. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to speak to something. People keep saying that there's no teeth. I mean, it depends how you define teeth, right? I think what I'm looking, what I would suggest is that we need some a code of a code of conduct to sort of as a guidepost. And uh, up to removal, there are other things that the body could decide to do, whether it's to uh, in public, you know, you know, sanction somebody publicly or uh, counsel somebody or make a. I think that the board does have authority or the committee does to do certain actions, but we do need a, a guiding, some guidelines, a governing document, and that would be, I think, a, a page and a half. Code of conduct will be very helpful okay. for us to focus on our on our work. Okay, that. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. That concludes the comment on this item and I think uh, what I've heard from committee members and plus the fact that it was uh, mentioned that the board had already adopted this so we would have to have gone back to the board to, to undo it but I think that uh, uh, what I hear the committee suggesting so that it would get support from the full board is that we rework the code and so I'm going to um, um, assign uh, Two members work with Mr. Jacobs and Ms. Simpson, uh, Mr. Fechner, and I got the indication that Mr. Perez does not want to be on the committee again. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so if and I'll appoint I'll appoint one other board member to work with Mr. Fechner to come and deal with all of these issues that you, each of the committee members. Right? Is that correct, Mr. Jason, or do you want to be on this committee? <laughs> okay, that's okay. Okay. I failed once, but I'll try it again. Oh, okay. Okay. So we will go back to the drawing boards with the those two members, and 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 I'm sure all those notes that each person had. Uh, um, is in the record, so therefore we will be responsive to all the concerns. Yes. Uh, wait just a minute. Uh, 13. Oh, that is Perez. Okay. Go ahead. Perez. If, if, does it have to be assigned to the current 
governance committee or can it be assigned to any board member? It can be assigned to, it should be the committee, yeah, because it's coming through back to Because I was going to suggest yes, Rufino and yeah. Ma. <laughs> you want him to replace you? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't think we could do. I, we could have two, and uh, that's the because if we get. No, no, the, I'm not saying replace me. I'm saying you, you know. But if we get another another person, Mr. Jacobs has advised that then we it's a public notice, and and every time you guys talk to each other about this, it has to be public notice, and you can't meet until that notice, et cetera. So we don't want it to take too long. No, and, only meant two. So we just yeah. Need two. Right, yeah. and I was I was. Because uh, it appears that the treasurer is very passionate about this, so let's give so her the you voice. So you said that he, you keep myself, replace you myself and the. No, I would asked Mr. Fechner already, and he agreed. Oh, he said yes. Yes. Uh -huh. My bad. Okay. Scratch that. He didn't have to give me a choice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, okay, I'll, I'll for nope. sure, Mr. Fechner, and I'll identify the next person after talking with him. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Before we move on, if I yeah. might just uh, identify that memo that I mentioned that is in uh, the resources section of diligent under uh, legal items and then under uh, attorney client privilege memorandums and uh, confirms what I had had advised the board. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now we will move on to um, agenda item six B uh, insight to Mr. Taylor. Oh, who's, that's what's the answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, President Jones. Okay. Uh, my happy task is simply to introduce Timothy Taylor. <laughs> and I'm glad to say that the topic of technology is simple and easy by comparison with ethics. So um, you've all been very gracious with your time giving feedback on the current board book. And we know that this project is really important to all the governance changes that are being implemented at the moment because it's intended to give you the real-time access to information mm -hmm. through the wonders of technology rather than pulling everyone you know, up to Sacramento for an in-person meeting. We'll also give more information for stakeholders. So I think both the quality, the timeliness, the accessibility of key data points is going to be improved. However, the person leading all of this is sitting next to me. So, Tim, let me hand over to you to um, run through. I'm going to give you this because it's got the uh, summary of the new features. Yeah. So, um, but thank you for all your time. This is an iterative project. So you're, as, as uh, Marcy said earlier, what you need in the way that you need it, when you need it, this is going to be critical and sort of bring CalPERS into the 21st century. So I'm very excited about this project. I think it's critical to everything else that's being done. And uh, Tim, if you've had a moment to Get ready. go, uh, that's uh, over to Tim. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President, uh, members of the board. I, w I wasn't looking for an introduction. I was just <laughs> caught a little off guard, so <laughs> I apologize. Um, I believe the agenda item captures very clearly um, what we're planning on uh, providing all of you um, over the next several releases, but just at a very high level, we're very eager to release our initial insight deployment to you guys at the end of the calendar year, so that'll reflect the very first release. Um, it'll have access to three years worth of historical agenda items. Uh, it'll also have the ability for note taking. Um, and we'll be providing those key vital signs, the, the analytics, the dashboard, that material that will be most helpful for you. So you can get data on a monthly basis and not necessarily have to come all the way to Sacramento to have a conversation. Uh, we've been working on a roadmap, uh, what the product will look like. We're anticipating that we'll be targeting quarterly releases so we'll try to have them at the end of a particular quarter do a significant uh, uplift with with enhancements but we also will have the ability to do smaller releases during those time frames in the event that there's a pressing need for some sort of data analytic any sort of correction that needs to be made any sort of must-have enhancement that we might be able to accommodate uh, going forward the the anticipation is we'll continue to increase the uh, the wealth and breadth of the information and vital signs 
providing more key information to all the various aspects that you might be interested in. Historically, producing more of the library of uh, agenda items that have existed to date and begin to tie those so it's easier for you to, in anticipation of an upcoming uh, topic for discussion, be able to trace kind of the lineage of that particular item, what were previous decisions made, why, those sorts of things, tighter integration with transcripts, and of course, uh, the, the powerful search engine that I know Ms. Brown's been looking for anxiously. So in a high-level nutshell, that's, that's the plan over the next four or five quarters. Yeah, and what we would be looking for from all of you out of this agenda item is a review that we've captured the input about what your expectations are, and if it isn't captured appropriately, that you spend some time in this committee giving that update to us so that Tim and his team can go and continue developing the tool. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We look forward to implementation. <laughs> okay, um, that is the end of the agenda items uh, so we have summary of committee decisions yeah oh 13. mr perez uh I'm, I'm sorry to to do this but i want to do we have an opportunity to ask a question on the last thing sure uh because we we have to agendize anytime we talk so i thought now would be a good time to ask what board members would like included in that board of conduct so I'll take notes and then we can. Well, no, it's it's already in the, the notes. Uh, everything that each board member said, it's it's in the in Is the, that in an in exhaustive list of what everyone wants? Good enough. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it the the I, I took notes too about what each person said, and so in the minutes, like for example, Teresa Taylor said that uh, there's no moral turpitude, uh, there's uh, uh, yeah, and Mona mentioned that uh, uh, heard sexual harassment. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the minutes, so you'll, get, you'll be able to get that, rather than sitting here another 30 minutes taking down notes of everybody, what everybody said. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, Mr. Perez, your question is, um, based on what's in the record, does everyone believe that that's the direction that you're giving to your two representatives to work with us on, or is there anything missing that you want to add to the record since we'll be using it as the basis? Thank you for translating. Okay, okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, seeing none, I think that they have satisfied what they said. Okay, uh, committee direction, uh, Mr. Jacobs. I don't think there's anything other than the uh, two board members, Mr. Fechner and Mr. Perez working uh, <clears throat> Primarily with Ann on the <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jacobs and Ann. draft of a code of conduct. This is called doing a Perez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, okay. There were uh, two others, uh, Mr. Jacobs, that I took note. Uh, Ms. Brown wanted a listing of any items that are removed from the investment committee agendas as a result of shortening? Well, I think that would be a byproduct of working with the chair of the investment committee on the agendas, agenda formats for 2020. Okay. And then as a part of that, we would have a listing or an index okay. of Good. pre and post or post and pre. Right. Okay, Ms. Brown. Uh, Mr. Chair, it wasn't just the investment committee. It was all the committees. Anything that was removed uh, that we used to have before us and now it's removed altogether, or if it's removed from discussion yeah. uh, to just consent. Yeah. Those both, both those things are important. I, yeah, I think the investment committee is really the only one that there would be that opportunity because of the just, 11 to 4, the rest of the committees already meet uh, basically on a quarterly basis. Great. Just want to be sure. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, that uh, then concludes the meeting. And uh, oh, Therese, you. Oh. Public comment? There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. I just. Really quickly, I was, I was thinking that you, uh, we had all said that, or I, I could be wrong, that uh, we were um, going to have this re-looked at, but um, a couple other people on it from the committee, rather than Rob and Jason. I thought, have fresh eyes on it, rather than Rob and Jason. <laughs> Just <laughs> no. helping Rob out, he seemed to want on, yeah. <laughs> 
And that, that, it's up to you. Yeah, Henry. I, I think they, they've done. They did a wonderful job. Yeah. It's just that we didn't like the results. So let's uh, t- let them take another. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just a thought. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. This meeting is adjourned. Excuse me. Was there any? Uh, oh, Mr. Wait, President, did yeah. you ask for whether there was any public comment? Oh, I'm sorry, I did not. Are there any public? Anyone would like to address the committee? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Okay, thank you, Mr. James.